Jamal Charles, non-contact injury. Ouch, man. This was uh, unexpected, but you kind of knew about Charles's history. And if you're a Kansas City fan, I'm sorry to report that news. He's out for the season, folks. Done. Out. So what do we do? Well, let's first touch on a guy we talked about uh, last week. And uh, as we kind of roll down the scroll here, as we look on some waiver wire cats that we were talking about, um, Leonard Hankerson, good game. I thought uh, Matt Ryan started off real slow, but uh, ended up having a good game. So I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you have him on your team. Uh, we're going to scroll down to my favorite, uh, you know, pick of the week was Thomas Rawls, and there were so many people that doubted him. Okay, there were a lot of experts that said, hey. Cincinnati's run defense, stay away. They're on the road. Um, you know, Russell Wilson's going to struggle. But, hey, this kid has the vision. We talked about it. He's a, he's a short, compact player with a low center of gravity. He reminds me a little bit of Ray Rice when Ray Rice was doing his reign in 2010 because the linebackers can't find him and they can't pick him out of the pack when he comes out from that hole. Now, there's some times when he's going to make a cut and he actually cuts to the wrong side of the field or the wrong direction. Not all the time, but sometimes. But what I saw that was so awesome in Cincinnati was these mesmerizing cuts and the, and the fact that he was able to turn his head and find the hole and then make an incredible juke, shake and bake, and somehow shed tacklers for that touchdown. I thought... Man, this kid exploded on the scene. We're so happy. We, we, we love Thomas Rawls. I've been supporting him since week four. And kind of what I was telling you about, folks, is the fact that Marshawn Lynch, his injury is something to where it's easy to sit on a couch. It's easy to rest because once you get that, and you've all stayed home from work sick, right? We all know how this works. It's kind of easy to say, you know what? I better stay one more day home. And just multiply that in weeks in football, right? It's it, You kind of get in this routine where it's it's not that bad to, to sit out for a while. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, Lynch is going to take a little bit more time. That's what my prediction was. Now, he could be altogether right back into it, but now why? Rawls is running hard. Rawls is running strong. He hit some really good gaps yesterday against, hey, a front seven Cincinnati at home. I was impressed. Uh, very proud of this young man. So let's get back to the situation at hand. We're talking about Jamal Charles now. We're talking about a Kansas City team who is without their star running back. And what do you do if you're a Charles owner? Well, my advice, because what I'm doing here is, and I'm an owner myself, if I go down to my team, if you look right here, that's my very first pick. I took Charles. Shoot, I even had Jordy Nelson as my second pick. I'm 4-0, uh, you know, with two of my guys out right now. Essentially, they're gone. So, uh, but, but the key to this whole situation was, did you pick up Niall Davis? And I did. If you look down, I think he was one of my last picks. There you go, round 13, best backup in football. I'm worried about what the masses are saying. I'm worried about what the sheep are doing because I hear all these websites. I'm listening and I'm, I'm getting this, you know, ear-to-the-ground, mouthful talk and, and everybody says that it's West. And, and go get West. Well, he catches the football, they say. Niles Davis can't catch. You know what? I still like Niles Davis better. I think he has a history with Andy Reid. His experience will outshine this other guy. And if you're wondering, well, how come Niles Davis hasn't gotten any looks? I truly believe that they're testing and warming up West. Because West will have to come in and fill some some third downs, right? He has to. Um, and again, I could be I could be this one guy saying this, and everybody's not going to believe it. You're going to say, "No, nah, no, nah, you're crazy." West has the edge. That's what everybody else says. I I certainly think that could be. But here's my prediction. I think they go back to the old steady, and Niles Davis comes back in, knows the playbook. He's a hard runner, folks. He hits the whole hard. He's got an assignment to get in the end zone, and, and that guy can do it anywhere in the red zone. I love Niall Davis for that. Um, who, never mind his hands. I don't care. You know, I play in a PPR league, but the reason why you have this handcuff is he can get you easily 10 to 12 fantasy points a week. That's all I ask for now because now this is my running back three. Um, you know, I'm going to have to make some trades to go get a number one, but he's still a, uh, he's still a, a smash-mouth guy. 
uh, hard-hitting, in-your-face type of runner, and I want him over West. And I'll be the first one to say it, and I'm going to say it right now. I think you go with Niles Davis on your waiver wire. Look for him and um, and make a play. Thanks for listening to this edition of Upside Down Drafting. Uh, thanks for tuning in with the, uh, the Thomas Rolls, and hey, may he uh, be the silver lining to your team if he keeps it going. I'm hoping Carlos Williams comes back, and now here's the third runner for you, Niles Davis, when all the sheep are going to go for West. All right, guys, enjoy the Monday night football game, and I'll see you on the next show. Thanks.